Hi, so my name is Ana Maria Strani. I'm also uh, one of the old cohorts of others in 2020. Uh, but, you know, as someone mentioned uh, in the um, in the chat previously for Diego, only like, you know, the legacy is ongoing. So, <laughs> um, so I'm currently a postdoc research associate uh, at the University of London uh, School of Advanced Studies, working at a tank project, uh, the Congress Engine. So my background is mainly media history and digital humanities. Um, I was back, uh, I was in Sussex when I applied for uh, the uh, fellowship. Um, so quite a progress. Uh, so I'm going to start my update uh, um, with the first part of my updates, uh, which is part of the fellowship, of course. So uh, last year we welcomed our rainbow daughter uh, and I'm uh, um, very uh, happy and um, particularly uh, grateful to SSI that supported uh, me and our, our family during this time because you know it was COVID, it was a, a very difficult time for us and we had such a great um, support from uh, the SSI, Rachel in particularly, but also like other fellows uh, that supported um, me uh, during um, this uh, um, very bizarre, but also like really excited time. So Lucia is now one year and a half, and we're really glad to uh, guys. Um, Second part of my updates is uh, the most interesting, I guess, uh, for uh, SSI uh, uh, people. So uh, these are like uh, things that I have um, pretty much planned during, during my fellowship, but also there are some surprises. And I'm very glad that I, um, that I had the opportunity to pursue them uh, also wearing my SSI fellowship. So, First of all, I just I managed to become a library carpentry instructor. For you uh, that you're not aware, so the carpentry is, is a kind of um, open source community providing uh, training uh, and also this model of training the trainer. So if you'd like to become a trainer, I can't recommend the training uh, provided by the carpentry enough. So I've done the library bit. There is software and there is data carpentry. Um, the way go search out and like do the training excellent community and great training so i feel very very much uh more uh secure about my training skills now so i can um um i can also let's say provide my own training with more security uh secondly that i'm very very glad that i managed to do during my SSI fellowship as i um i became a uh, director of the program historian LTD, so the Prog is LTD. Uh, the program historian is, a, is an open source educational resource, a journal actually for languages right now, looking for other as well. Uh, and we um, we converted uh, last year. I mean, we actually adopted the child status in order to proceed uh, for um, uh, in order to facilitate actually our procedures. Uh, um in uh, mainly in the uk but also uh internationally and uh, we uh we managed also to uh set up uh, the international partnership program this is a um, this is a kind of community-based initiative as well so that uh communities that are institutions or also private um um, you know, um, instances can support the program historian financially, so we can ensure that the resources, that the educational resources that we are uh, creating are um, open access and free of charge uh, to all our users. Um, um, the, another thing that I'm very happy that I've managed to do through my SSI fellowship is I managed to get my Agile certificate. So I get that the foundation of practitioners for you that you're not aware, so Agile is a um, project management certification, which is really bizarre for a humanities person like me to have this, but I realized throughout my career that it's really important um, um, as I became also PI, uh, but also as a lead project, you know, to have this project management uh, expertise and the certification of it. So I'm um, really glad uh, that I did it. Uh, really difficult, but I managed it and I recommend it. Um, and, and the other 
two points that I have as an update, there are two uh, surprises. So the first is uh, the uh, last year there was, a, we ran a survey on the, uh, um, on behalf of the HRC on digital software requirements. Um, this was uh, last year about this time, and we are now ready to publish the final report of the survey. I'm going to briefly um, introduce you to a couple of uh, the, the findings of the survey. I'm happy to see that uh, uh, Saab is here as well, sorry. So Saab is also kind of the lead of the survey, and we worked together with uh, my co-fellow, uh, Emily Bell from the University of Leeds. Uh, so what we managed to do through the survey is to capture, you know, the requirements in terms of uh, software uh, needs and software training across the uh, arts and humanities community. It was a really interesting survey in terms of the findings, but also in terms of the like analysis that we are now doing. Um, um, I'm going to very uh, very quickly point to the recommendations that we are um, getting there. Uh, so um, um, we realize that it's important to uh, tailor support in terms of training, but also in terms of infrastructure for each career stage in terms of uh, uh, the, um, the stakeholders. So provision trainings in terms of techniques and skills in computational aspects. Uh, uh, and provide a program of activities from beginner to more advanced. So this kind of uh, spectrum in terms of um, uh, training, encourage sustainable software practices and maintain directories of relevant projects to facilitate their use. This is something that is uh, currently lacking. Encourage application to software digital focus fellowships such as the SSI fellowship uh, to encourage uh, interdisciplinary and uh, network uh, discovery and following uh, sharing uh, best practices. Try to tailor funding calls, and this is a, a recommendation to funders uh, particularly, to encourage the development of skills at particular career stages uh, by encouraging collaboration across career stages, um, across sectors and disciplines. And finally, try to support uh, the recognition and prestige of software and generally innovation as high value research output by funding sustainability, training and innovation, and also by championing such as outputs in the research uh, excellence framework. Right. Uh, so the report is now in the final stage and is about to uh, be published, I think, hopefully in the next couple of months, so keep an eye on it. And the, um, the last bit that I just want to raise uh, as a kind of an update. So um, in parallel of my uh, SSI fellowship, I also got a policy and engagement fellowship in digital research and innovation infrastructure on behalf of the HRC and UKRI. So what I've done there, uh, I've just tried to do a, a landscape mapping and stakeholders assessment in terms of uh, HRC infrastructure, digital infrastructure. Um, I've also uh, uh, managed to uh, run a couple of uh, focus groups and uh, engagement activities, and I'm now in the final stage of uh, road mapping uh, um, and uh, report writing in order to, uh, so I managed to um, uh, secure enough data and evidence in order to have this uh, um, uh, Top level technical requirements for a, a, an ecosystem of arts and humanities digital research infrastructure. And I'm also uh, drafting a business case, a governance structure where the project management structure is was very valuable. Um, and one thing that I'm very proud as part of this fellowship and in line with my SSI fellowship, I run uh, the uh, Research Software Engineer Steering Group. Uh, so this is the first ever discussion uh, about the uh, UK Atlas Humanities Research Infrastructure with a broad and representative group of stakeholders. Chair of the group uh, is James uh, Smithes from KCL. So we run two hybrid workshops at the Turing and we managed to have 33 participants from 21 institutions across UK and Ireland. The main idea was to engage in blue sky thinking uh, around how to better support the uh, infrastructure in arts and humanities from an RSC perspective and also to leveraging RSC provision within arts and humanities. And the output is a, a report and a set of recommendations, costed recommendation actually to HRC. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, and um, 
I'm just uh, going to recap and say that I'm um, I'm I'm happy that I you know now that the the extension of the extension uh, is getting to an end of the fellowship, I'm very happy that I managed to have this um, you know this fellowship and managed to uh, both um, um, uh, you know um, enhance my professional um, um, career, but also support the community of practice of the uh, digital humanities and um, arts and humanities more broadly with evidence based. Uh, uh, research and a lot of uh, policy making, which was a, um, within my um, initial plans. And if you have any questions or any ideas, I'm more than happy to hear this. Thank you.